Have you recently updated your Zoom meeting and you now see a new view there that is your multi-speaker view? And you're just curious about how it works, what's a practical application for it for your next Zoom meeting or event that you're doing in Zoom? Well, I'm gonna break down some of the use cases for it and tell you a little bit more about this feature. Before I jump into it, I'm Logan Clements. I'm a freelance event producer based in Seattle, Washington, but I execute events here and all over the world. I do wanna remind you to like, subscribe, turn on that little notification bell so you get notified every single Monday when I drop new videos. I'm also the co-host of the Better Events Podcast with fellow event pro Mary Davidson. We dive even more into these topics about event planning, event production, event management. We had stage management in there. I talk about some of the work I've done with the Olympics. Think of it as a more in-depth dive into the event world than this YouTube channel. So listen wherever you listen to podcasts. So if you've been with me before, you know I use Zoom a lot. That is something that during COVID I really dove into. I've been doing this recent series all about Zoom 6.0, recent update that they had in April 2024. And I just wanted to go through some of the features that I think are more noticeable and functional for people who are using Zoom Meeting, not only for their virtual meetings or their video calls, but also for events, because that's kind of the lens that I come at all of these things for. So what we're talking about in this video today is our multi-speaker view. Okay, so here we are in Zoom Meeting. Again, I'm using a Mac. I have updated to at least the 6.0 version, my caveat that I'm doing on all these videos. If you have not updated to 6.0 or 6.1, 6.01, blah, 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 any of the newer versions in 6.0, you are not gonna see what I'm talking about. I'm also the host of this meeting, so there are certain features that I will see that you will not see if you were just the attendee in the meeting. But what this feature I'm talking about, this view option is applicable to both hosts as well as attendees and meetings. In the upper right-hand corner, you will click on view, and you will see the first two options we're very familiar with. Those have been around for years, speaker view and gallery view. Again, speaker view means Zoom automatically follows the last person who is speaking. They follow kind of the microphone that is making sound. So one person is bigger while everybody else is smaller. Gallery view is everybody's the same size, and you can see everyone at once. You have the option also to hide people who have their camera off or anything like that, but it's looking at everyone the same size. My caveat with speaker view has it has always been if somebody coughs or sneezes in speaker view Zoom, we'll jump to that person and then jump back to the speaker. It goes kind of with the loudest sounds that it's hearing. Immersive also has been an option that Zoom rolled out a couple updates ago. I'd say it's been around maybe two years at this point, maybe even three, um, that just allows you to like cut yourself out and be yourself immersive in a scene. I only used this once for one client who wanted it to look like we were in a library, I think was the feature. Um, and again, it was a tough one because I caveat people who have not updated their Zooms to these versions will not see these features. So again, that's not a deterrent of why not to use it. I just say it's a caveat if you tend to have a group that is uh, doesn't use Zoom all that often or maybe is a little older, they're not gonna see that. So this view option, multi-speaker, if you click that, what it does is it's controlling, all of these views are controlling your individual view, you as a person. In Zoom webinar, it does allow you as the host to control what your attendees see and you can use these views in that context, but I'm just talking about Zoom meetings. This is you personally. So one of the hard parts with these views is for me individually to show you them. I need to have a lot of people in this meeting and that's just hard for me as, as somebody who records on their own. So I'm showing you a screenshot here uh, with the blurred out participants from a meeting that I was on where I was utilizing this multi-speaker view. And so what you can really think of for multi-speaker is that you have speaker view plus gallery view combined into one. And so you have your speakers nice and big, your gallery folks are nice and small, one of the cool things is the divider between the two, the gallery view and the speaker view is movable so I can slide it up and that would make my speaker view, my big speaker smaller and my gallery bigger. So it's really good for you if you're just someone who needs to focus on just the speakers, you can make gallery small or if you wanna focus on the gallery, you can make the speakers a little smaller. And the reason why this is better than just speaker view for some people is if again, you have multiple speakers talking this will capture that kind of discussion instead of jumping back and forth to each single speaker. And it's a little more focused than gallery view. Again, like I said, if people haven't updated their Zoom, they are not gonna see that this is a feature. And I haven't yet figured out what Zoom is using for the amount of time for how long it keeps people 
up in that speaker view. I have noticed with like three or four people up there, one person asked one question and instead of just immediately returning to the gallery, Zoom kept them up there in that speaker view for a good minute or two. And I don't think, again, that person maybe didn't have their Zoom updated, so they didn't know that they are still kind of large and in charge on the screens of people who are utilizing that view. So again, it's not necessarily a reason not to use it, but just something to think about. Um, I see this being a really practical tool for meetings. Um, it could be also for any kind of interactive virtual event where you wanna have your speakers big and your attendees smaller. I haven't yet played around with how spotlighting plays into this. That is something that's on my list to get a video out to you guys once I have had a little more time just to, to test it. Um, because again, any of these views, that speaker view, that gallery view, and this multi-speaker view currently is just controlled by Zoom automatically doing these things. So automatically bringing someone unmuted to screen and adding them to this cluster that you could say of speakers that you have at the top of your screen. I will say I've seen if it is a one person presentation, like a couple meetings I've been a part of, just been one person speaking, even in multi-speaker view, it would just have that one person up you know, on screen bigger than the others. The main thing multi-speaker does is it just takes into account if more than one person has unmuted and said something, it will bring those people up onto your stage to join your speakers. And then I think it's still figuring out just how long to keep them there after they've been muted and haven't said anything. So hopefully that helps you understand a little bit more about the multi-speaker view. I encourage you if you're someone who utilizes Zoom or you're just curious, try this in your next meeting or your next video call and just see how it works for you. Again, these are newer features that came out in Zoom 6.0 back in April 2024. And so we're still figuring out exactly the practical uses. There's always updates coming from Zoom, but that 6.0 one was a pretty significant one for features that you as a user would notice. Thank you so much for being here. I'm Logan Clements, freelance event producer based in Seattle, Washington. I wanna thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.